Michael starts his gatherings into the zone. Score! Echo wins it at the Sun Devils. Make it 18. Welcome into this week's edition of Hell Frozen Over alongside Nick Merrick. I'm Kerry Crowley and we're here to talk Sun Devil Hockey again. And the Sun Devils travel this week to North Dakota for a game on Thursday night against Williston State. And then quick two-game series against Minot State on Friday and Saturday night. And Nick, the Sun Devils have already played these teams earlier on in the season. It was just January when they met Williston and Minot. What's the key going into this weekend? Well, obviously the Williston game technically shouldn't be one the Sun Devils should overlook. However, it should be almost a walk in the park for them. As uh, Coach Powers realized his team in the midst of that so-called slump was playing probably one of its worst hockey, but still came up with a 7-1 victory here at home against Williston State. So it shouldn't be much of an issue there. So let's just cut that and go right to Minot State. A two-versus-three matchup this weekend. Plenty of implications come national tournament time, which will be released Wednesday night. Uh, but this could be a preview of possibly two semifinal matchups if that were to hold because these are two very strong teams in the ACHA. They've proven their worth, but it's going to come down to the defensive battle as well. Um, and when we look at both goaltenders, only gave up two goals, uh, Minot State, while Senchuk, and then also uh, Joe Delia only allowing three of his own. Plenty of shots going to be peppered on that. Very grudge match and will should be a fun one this weekend. Absolutely. You mentioned they don't want to look uh, Williston State. They did beat them 7-1, but don't forget Williston State beat the Arizona Wildcats last weekend, so that's obviously a very impressive win on their resume. But of course the Sun Devils are looking to these two games against Minot State because they have so, uh, so much value for the national championship run that both teams are going to be trying to make. Uh, Adrian College is number one in the country right now, but Arizona State number two, Minot State number three. Both teams have great chances of winning the national tournament. We know that anything can happen especially last year when we saw Oakland's run to the national championship. Uh, obviously they lost, but still, anything can happen come national tournament time. So both of these teams are going to be looking to pick up momentum. Who do you expect the Sun Devils, for the Sun Devils, to step up this weekend? Well, again, with the loss of Colin Heckles, he's going to have to be out this weekend, more than likely for uh, Arizona at the end of February. I'm going to look back to the guy he said uh, when, we, when we got a chance to talk to him. He's going to step up. He said Kale Delinsky, and he did just that this past uh, two weekends ago that is back here in Ocean's High Serena and really performed well. It's going to have to be a full team leadership though. It's not just going to be the, the rise of Kale Delinsky, so to speak. That top line was going so well. We've been giving it so much praise. But then having to shift that around, they put Stephen Collins up top. So Stephen Collins needs to come back into his form this coming weekend against Minot State. He's been not playing as good of hockey as we've seen from him at least in the start of the year. So the freshman did have two points against Minot State the last time those met up, so maybe that'll give him some confidence going for this weekend. Yeah, he was one of the few Sun Devils to get it past Weisel Entruck in that 3-2 to two loss that the Sun Devils suffered right here at Oceanside Arena. But you mentioned Cale Delinsky needing to step up for the, for the Sun Devils. He had a huge series in the Cactus Cup rivalry, and it's sort of a homecoming for him this weekend. He played his freshman season for the Beavers in North Dakota, and he had a 66-point freshman season, which is just one of the most sensational freshman years the ACHA has ever seen. Coach Greg Powers is so happy that he's playing for the Sun Devils because now that makes the Sun Devils the national title contenders that they are right now. Well, he got credited too with the ACHA Rookie of the Year as well coming into the league. So obviously a very prestigious guy on the ice and the Sun Devils fans are well aware of it. But on top of that, this will come down to a defensive battle. Just want to highlight that Minot State's only given up 44 goals allowed this season, eight total shutouts. That's the best in the ACHA, so they do not give up many goals. So this Sun Devil team wants to find their attack maybe you're going to have to find a little earlier in Williston State and carry that momentum because if they're going to look to start the offense and wait until Friday night, it's not going to go the way they plan. Well, believe it or not, when the Sun Devils scored two goals against Minot State this season, that was actually above the season average allowed for Minot State. They have one goalie with a 1.75 goals allowed average, and then their other goalie who plays just, just as much. Just under 1.5. Yeah, 1.52. Can you believe that? So Minot State, obviously one of the best defensive teams the ACHA has seen in a long time. It's going to be a great matchup this weekend, and we're looking forward to what's going to happen in terms of the national tournament. Well, I guess it's just going to be time will tell between these two rivalries. It's a kind of a rivalry in the midst just because of the whole thing with Kale Delinsky. There's no grudge between the two teams, but obviously anytime you have a two versus three, it's going to be a great show. Well, it's going to be a great weekend for hockey in the ACHA. Stay tuned. We'll talk with Sun Devil coach Greg Powers right after this. Tacos? Nah. Burgers? Yesterday. Right. <clears throat> I'm 
I'm thinking. Mongolian. Looking for a fresh, healthy alternative? Take a trip to Genghis Grill. Spice up your favorite meats and seafood, then load up on veggies. Choose a sauce and let our Genghis Grill masters cook your selection to perfection. Genghis Grill, masters of Mongolian stir fry. Hey, go vegetarian. <laughs> ah, chicken. Me too. Ugh. Welcome back to Hell Frozen Over. We're joined now by Sun Devil coach Greg Powers. And coach, big series coming up this weekend. The two team in the country, Arizona State, playing against the number three team in the country, Minot State. You guys did battle earlier on in January. What's going to be different about this series? You know, I mean, it's just it's a great series for both teams, really, just to prepare for nationals. And that's why we're going. You know, I mean, it's after the final seeding. But uh, Coach Rajir and, and I got together and, and decided to, to schedule these games anyway. Um, you know, they'll have a packed house. It'll be a good environment for us. And the last two years, we've really taken this last this, this week off. Um, and then we hop in against U of A, and, and, you know, they have everything to play for, and we know we're going to nationals. So it's a weird dynamic playing Minot, a team like Minot, who's big, they're tough, they're strong, they're very good. Um, in front of a packed house, you know, it, it's really going to help prepare us for what we're going to see in Chicago, and that's why we're doing it, um, to really get in that mindset now. Uh, and, and then obviously down at U of A, playing in front of five, 6,000 people, it'll be intense as well. So the guys should be ready for Chicago. Well, we mentioned in the first segment a lot about the Minot State defense. Uh, they are the best in the ACH area now, only allowed 44 goals, and believe it or not, those two goals that you guys uh, got against them was actually above their league average they allow. Um, so how, how are you going to look for the offense to really take its form this coming weekend? You know, I mean, we, we've been struggling to put the puck in the net, you know, all month for the most part. Um, and, and, you know, the excuse of, of they have a hot goalie or whatever, it, it's it's run out. So guys just got to find the back of the net, you know. And, and to do that, you have to simplify. You just have to throw pucks on net. You, you can't worry about always taking that perfect shot. You have to get traffic. You have to get to the net. And that's what we focused on a lot in practice this week. So. Um, you know, if they're not pretty, they'll be ugly, and, and, and you got to score ugly to win, and, and guys got to get in that mindset, and hopefully it'll start this weekend. We've talked maybe about Liam Norris coming back this week. Is, do you think there's any chance he'll be back for the three games this weekend? He'll be back. He's cleared. He, he's going to be in the lineup. Um, he's, he's good to go, and we're really excited about that. Uh, huge boost to our, our offense, and, and uh, it's, it's, it's a big, big deal for us, so we're happy about it. On top of that, is there any guy on offense besides maybe Norris now coming back? So. Getting closer to that Sun Devil starting line we've seen uh, at the beginning of the season, who, who do you hope to step up uh, on offense this weekend? Well, you know, without Hex there this weekend, a lot of guys are going to have to step up. And, um, you know, we, we uh, you know, Fez and, and Sterna are going to have to keep working their magic together. And then we're probably going to put McGinty with those guys, and, and that'll be a really good line. And then obviously Norris and Kale and Danny will be back together, and that's a great line. And, um, you know, those, those six guys are really going to have to go for us. And then we have a, a, another good third and fourth line. You know, so everyone's going to have to step up. And the, when you're missing who's probably the best player in our league and, and, and Colin Heckle and, and our captain and our clear leader, um, it's going to take more than just one guy to, to step into his shoes. It's going to take a, a bunch of them. And, and I think they'll do it. You've talked all season long about building up, reaching your peak at nat by the time of Nationals. How do you think the team's responding right now with just two weeks to go? Yeah, it's tough to say. I mean, we, we have some key injuries still, you know, and guys like Hex and Jordy, they're still out, and, and we expect them to play at Nationals. So, um, you know, I, I think these games and then the games against U of A really will dictate if we're, if we're going to reach that peak before we get there. Um, so, you know, I can answer that question probably a little bit better after this weekend. Have to go back. Uh, you know, believe it or not, I realized we never even mentioned uh, the game-winning goal Darcy Charlois had two in the defense. So, kind of want to shift gears since we had a week off and held frozen over. Can you comment a little about the defensive changes and how you felt they adjusted their first full weekend series um, together two weekends ago? Yeah, I, I'm very happy with the D. You know, I mean, I think that uh, in every sense, uh, all the pairings are just working incredibly well. You know, I mean, it's it's we made that change. What was it against Stony Brook? Yes. And, uh, you know, since, since then, defensively, we have been, that's how we've been winning games, you know, and, and uh, the guys have simplified it. I think they were getting really comfortable with those pairs that we had forever. I mean, it was almost a year and a half we had the same pairs and, you know, dating them back to last season. And, and uh, when that happens, guys get complacent, guys start thinking they, they can telegraph and thinking they can, you know, know where the other guy is at all times. And instead of just playing a simple game and moving the puck and, um, you know, doing all the little things right. And, and that's what you do when you're playing with somebody that you might not be that comfortable with. Um, you know, there's no complacency. So, you know, the pairings are working great. You know, uh, Darcy and Richie are, are, are a, a true shutdown pair. 
And, and you know, that's going to be huge for us going into nationals. And, and right now, I'd say defensively, easily, they're a top pair. Well, Coach, obviously the excitement's building. The brackets are all set, so good luck this weekend. Thanks, guys. All right. Stay tuned for more Hell Frozen Over after the break. How do we rise to the challenges before us? State University. Welcome back to Hell Frozen Over, and we're joined now by Sun Devil forward Ben Finley. And after three weeks of conducting interviews with players who tower over me, I finally get to talk to someone my height. So Ben, thank you for that. I'm glad to help out any way I can. So obviously a big week, uh, big weekend coming up against Minot State and Williston State. What are you guys looking forward to most? Uh, I think you know getting up north will be fun for us. Uh, our team hasn't traveled that far north in a long time, so. I mean, getting a taste of, you know, for me personally, a lot of the Canadians, it's good to get up north and get a little closer to home. So I think a few of the guys are looking forward to that. Well, we're going to go back to below zero temperatures, so maybe uh, yeah. maybe you aren't too aware of that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, I think we're all prepared for it, and I don't know if we're necessarily looking forward to the weather, but it should be an experience. Now, going into the weekend, it's obviously two versus three. That's a big headline story. You guys have been clicking now better. Um, both on offense and defense. The goaltending's always been phenomenal all season long. So what, what's going to be the next step for the Sun Devil team? Uh, to be honest, we're looking to prepare for nationals at this point. Uh, we're getting ready for Chicago. And our mindset is, you know, play every game, uh, you know, every game that we have left like it's the first game at nationals and just try and get a killer instinct going and, you know, prepare to be successful in Chicago. You guys uh, struggled a little bit against Minot State earlier this year, fell 3-2. to two. Uh, What's the big key going into this series went for the offense? Uh, you know, they got a good team. They got a big, strong team. Uh, we got to be, you know, we got to be sharp on offense. We, today in practice, we were working on our goal scoring, and that's kind of what we need to do. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, obviously high power offense that we need to utilize more, and we worked on that today, so let's hope it carries over. And two weekends ago against U of A, you saw a lot of shifts coming in all different situations of the game. Uh, both man down, even strength, being inserted kind of all over the place. Because uh, you just play, you seem to play well with every single Sun Devil. So are we going to see uh, any spectacular things in the Silent Assassin? <laughs> Silent Assassin, okay. Uh, <laughs> spectacular things, I hope so. I mean, uh, every game I try and, you know, do something spectacular with, with the opportunity I have. But honestly, every opportunity I have, I, I try and embrace it and I try and play my role like like I'm you know supposed to and whatever coach powers uh, expects from me I try to give him that every night so whatever uh, I'm gonna do the best I can every night we've got six goals this season that leads the fourth line I believe uh, but you're also the leader of something we like to call the fourth line book club can you talk a little bit about that the fourth line book club okay well uh, there's a little inside joke in the locker room uh, me Connor Buchanan and Phil Sansone we call ourselves the fourth line book club uh, yeah, we, <laughs> I don't know how, I, well, we like to joke that when we're uh, taking a rest on the bench, we, we like to discuss chapters of our latest novel that we've all decided to read, and it's, it's an ongoing joke, it's nothing too serious, but we, we have fun with it, and that's, that's all there is to say about that. <laughs> well, it obviously builds the team chemistry. Good luck this weekend heading into Minot State, yeah. and you got Arizona the following weekend, yeah. and then you're on to Nationals. Yeah, thanks guys, appreciate that. Thank All right, stay tuned. When we come back, Kevin Hamlin will have a D2 update. I think when you come watch our team practice, what you're going to see is we go extremely fast. Practices, our tempo, everything is up 100%. In spring ball, we were going game speed, and he still thinks it's slow. You have to be mentally tough. Every snap, you better give 100%. I just like to fight the grind every single play. Do not put two hands on offensive linemen. What I saw when I showed up here, I saw a bunch of young kids that was hungry to win. The sky's the limit for Sun Devil football. Hey, welcome back, and this is the D2 Update. I'm your host, Kevin Hanlon, and this is my guest, Clayton Dixon, coming in. How's it going? This week, we got a big deal in the D2. We got ASU D2 versus NAU, big rivalry weekend. We're going to get up there. Uh, a couple weeks ago, D2 played against them, and a big win, big fight over there. Uh, Ryan Moore getting gritty. Loved it. It was beautiful. 
And uh, we took it on Clayton Dixon himself at a hat trick. That's where we got him on today to talk to you. Clayton, what are we looking for this weekend home against NAU? Looking for some fans. What else? What do we got? I mean, it's real exciting. The uh, rivalry games for us are a big deal. NAU is our uh, best opponent right now, so we have a good time doing that. Uh, senior night this week, Saturday, so it's our last game for a lot of our seniors. A big core of our team is uh, graduating this year, so we'd love to see the support. Yeah, make sure you get out there. Tickets are $5? Yeah. Five dollars, you can get them on us. Maybe you get a special deal. I don't know. You gotta ask around. It's gonna be a fun weekend, fun games, a lot of action. This is it. This is D2 rivalry. Last couple of games before they're going into nationals. They're looking to win, looking to play, looking to take on the cup. Dixon, what do the D2 players have to focus on rolling into Natties, rolling into these NEU games? What are they focused on? Well, we just want to finish off the season strong. We want to roll into Natty's feeling confident, scoring, feeling good, so we can take the cup home. That's, what, that's the plan. Now, you've had some success as of late. You've had a couple of hat tricks, and uh, you know, you've had the fans support. How does that feel? Oh, it feels great. You know, wheeling out there, putting, burying a little bit. Second half feels good, getting the guys going, so we've been having a good time. Is that what it's all about for you, getting the boys going, oh, getting yeah. the juice going? Oh, it's all about for the boys. Uh, it's all about the teamwork out there. You know, my line mates, I have to give it up to Brady Morgan, Johnny Randall, feeding me the puck, you know, shout -outs. giving me the ammo. and uh... <laughs> Feed me the ammo. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been fun. So, anyways, rolling in uh, nationals, what do the boys have to focus on as a team getting down serious? What are the boys looking at in the locker room? What's uh, Coach Kevin, Coach Dennis, what are they talking about? Well, right now we're just trying to uh, keep the legs fresh, working on a lot of skating, a lot of flow and practices, keep our hands sharp. Just got to make sure that we, uh, we don't bottom out here. We got to keep uh, on the rise going into nationals. So you say it's important to not get um, complacent. complacent. Exactly, That's the word. Kev. Exactly, yeah. Kev. Thanks, Clayton. Thank you. <laughs> That's it for the D2 update. I'm going to send it off to Josh and Richie. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Kevin, and welcome to Around the ACHA. Alongside Richard Flores, I'm Josh Franz. Richie, what team needs to finish strong as we're looking into now nationals and the tournament time? Yeah, Josh, I'm looking at, you know, Robert Morris. Right now they're ranked fourth as we approach the national tournament, and, you know, I'm looking for them to finish strong because I think you know that, you know, teams like Adrian and Arizona State and Minot State, that they're good teams and they're going to contend for a title. So a team like Robert Morris, they have a big couple big matchups against Adrian and against Iowa State this in a, this weekend as well. So I need I want to see them step up, get some huge victories, get some momentum going, so they can stay in touch with those top three teams. Because I think you know I think they're clearly the class of the ACHA. Those top three. Right, that top three is pretty much set. My team falls a little more down in the rankings. The team that I need, think needs to finish strong is 12th ranked Oakland. They're fighting for a first round by Nationals. We'll see where they end up in just a few hours now. But going on to next weekend, they play 8th ranked Davenport. So that'll be a real measuring stick to see where they belong heading into, into tournament time. Next thing to look at is the player who had the best week last weekend. So who for you stood out? Yeah, Josh, my Shane Doan Award for Hockey Awesomeness in the ACHA this past weekend is going to go to Chad Hudson. He's playing for number six ranked Oklahoma. He had a pretty good weekend against Central Oklahoma, their rival. He had four goals in a game on Saturday against Central Oklahoma, but in total he had five points in two games for Oklahoma this weekend. He had a really good weekend against a rival. And, uh, you know, Oklahoma is one of those teams, too, that is, you know, right inside that top five or six in this such close ACHA. And uh, Chad Hudson had a good weekend. That's right. A great weekend there against great competition. My guy did the same. We talked about Minot State earlier. Logan Hiroff is, plays for Minot State. In two games against 18th ranked U of A, he had four points, a goal, and an assist in each matchup. So he's proven that against some of the top teams in the country, he can go off and have a good day and lead his team to victory. Yeah, I mean, Josh, that was a big win for Minot State. You know, we're looking at the 
the rankings coming out here in just a bit. And Arizona and Josh, I don't think they're going to make it. I mean, it, they've had some really bad losses here in the last couple of weeks against ASU and Minot State. And I think it's going to be really tough for those guys to, you know, get into the national tournament. Right. They're definitely a bubble team right now. We'll find out in a few hours if they're inside or outside or if their bubble's popped. We'll find out in just a little while. But now going into this next weekend, what is your matchup to watch? Yeah, you know, I mentioned him earlier, Josh. I mentioned, you know, uh, Robert Morris, you know, number four ranked. And they're going, to, going into this weekend. They're going to play Iowa State in the uh, CSCHL playoffs. And uh, it's going to be a big weekend for Robert Morris. They're 3-1 and one against Iowa State this season. So I think they're the favorites in this series. But like I talked about earlier, they need to get some big wins headed into the national tournament to get some momentum and, you know, get that confidence rolling. Because, you know, as we know, in any sport, once you get into those playoffs, anything can happen. And a lot of times, especially in hockey, you need a hot goaltender. And, uh, you know, this is going to be one of those series where I think the Robert Morris goaltender can really get momentum. Right. I have a matchup between the 16th-ranked Stony Brook and 17th-ranked Rhode Island Rams. Assuming both teams make it into the national tournament, this will be a matchup to basically see. It's a measuring stick, once again, to see where they belong, how they're, gonna, how they're playing going into the national tournament, and what they might need to tweak in their game in order to be successful. Both teams should make the tournament, but at the bottom of the list. But we've talked about Stony Brook on this, on this show before. I think they have a chance to really make a run at the title. Yeah, Josh, I mean, you know, they two games against ASU, uh, I mean, we talked about on this show before how well Stony Brook played against ASU, so you know they're a good team when you play that well against a top two opponent like Arizona State. You know, they're going to be a fun team to watch, an interesting team to watch that's coming from a little bit further down the rankings. They definitely could be a surprise team in the national tournament, but without, we'll find out. Without a doubt, Richie. That'll do it for Hell Frozen Over. For Richard Flores, I'm Josh Strons. We'll be back with more Hell Frozen Over after the break. When you've lost that love and feeling, donate it to Good Wheels. Your unwanted vehicle will help fund job skills training and human services programs for disadvantaged Arizonans. You'll even receive a tax deduction. So call 602-416-6278 for more information. Or visit us online at www.goodwillaz.org. Good stuff, good work, good will. Thanks, Richie and Josh. We're going to close up the show by talking a little bit about the national tournament picture. The brackets are all set to be released. In all likelihood, the Sun Devils will get the number two seed right behind the Adrian Bulldogs. Yep. So, Nick, obviously, with the, with the Oakland Grizzlies' run to the national championship last season, they lost, but they did make a deep run as a low seed in the tournament. Are there any teams that you think could really surprise uh, during this tournament in Chicago? Well, the rise that Oakland had actually last season, the reason why I don't want to look at that top team in the ACHA, so I'm kind of going to go away from Adrian uh, because Penn State was arguably the most dominant team in the ACHA last season. Oakland pretty much cleaned their clocks right after Arizona State, just like clockwork. Then Delaware obviously picking up the championship, and Delaware was a lower seed in that term. They came in kind of in the middle of the pack. Uh, they were they were obviously still a top 10 team. However, I'm going to go if it's not ASU or Minot State, which are two teams that very well can make a run. I'm going to go very low with my dark horse and go with Illinois University. Reason for that. It's more of a home game for them, kind of just like Robert Morris, Illinois. However, Illinois has been getting off momentum in the 2013 season. Seven and one wins uh, since January 1st, and then they won their last seven and some prestigious wins over Lindenwood. They've also swept Robert Morris. They won their, their conference championships. It's a dangerous team with its senior leader, Scott Barrera, up top, and then also a couple freshmen inserted in that mix. So they should be fun to watch. I'm not sure they're necessarily going to win it yet, but for the hometown fans over there in Chicago, certainly uh, could make the Oakland rise, so to speak. Well, they proved that they could beat Robert Morris, and since Robert Morris will be on their home ice, that's going to be a key matchup. If those two teams end up playing each other, I think that Illinois definitely holds the advantage, Tough even though to Robert Morris season. is at home. Yeah. But for me, I'm going to choose the number six team in the country, a little lower seed as well, the Oklahoma Sooners. I think that they can make a deep run into this tournament. They do have the most losses of any team in the top ten, but the reason they're ranked number six is their quality wins. We saw just a month ago, they really worked the Sun Devils in a 6-3 to three victory. They beat Central Oklahoma 12-1 to one yeah. last weekend. So this Oklahoma team is clearly firing on all cylinders. If they can control their penalty minutes, they are among tops in the ACHA in penalties, I do think that Oklahoma can make a deep run in this tournament. Well, they've been doing a nice job, at least in the second half. I think all those stats, uh, the penalty stats, kind of came more towards the top heavy. Uh, so they have been clicking well. However, they're kind of having the same issue the Sun Devils are having, uh, at least when they came in town a bit ago, and that's the health. If health is going to be a concern, that's, that's the reason why maybe Arizona State might come in as a two seed. But if they aren't fully healthy, and let's say they're going to be gone 
two or three guys that are crucial. If Colin Heckel's not 100%, maybe he's 80%. That's going to drop them a little bit. It'll, it'll still have the same momentum, but other teams are going to be aware of that, and they're going to say, let's capitalize on this. So that's the only scare I have of Oklahoma if, if, they're, if they have a health issue going in. But I, they are a very, very talented team. Well, both the Sun Devils and the Sooners have at least nine players who've already co recorded 20 points this season. They can both score in a variety of ways. Yeah. They've got some of the best depth in the ACHA. But right now we're going to focus a little bit on the Arizona State Minot State matchup this weekend in North Dakota. We talked about it earlier in the show. It's going to be a good one. Any, any predictions from you, Nick? Uh, I don't know. It's going to be another good one. The Sun Devils obviously have that little grudge on their back. They're going to want to go in after losing back here in Oceanside 3-2 to uh, to start things off. But if they're going to have to really try to capitalize without their captain. This is the time to see what the offense is going to step up. I think it's very possible there's going to be a sweep for Arizona State this weekend. However, I think it's going to end in a split if I were to predict right now. I, I, I believe the two teams will, will kind of share. I think the Sun Devils will take the first game. I think they're going to go in eager to win. Uh, they don't definitely don't want to lose two straight against Minot State. That'll kind of hurt them. Then the ACHA is going to be like, maybe Arizona State's not as strong as we think. So I think a split's very much possible, but it's going to be neck and neck on both of them. Oh, yeah, both teams with a lot to prove. But that about does it for us on Hell Frozen Over. For Nick Merrick, I'm Kerry Crowley and the rest of the Walter Cronkite Sports Network. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back again next week.